This is Art Now and Then. My name is Jim Lane. Everyone loves Paris. It has been called the most beautiful city in the world. Of course, Venice, Washington, D.C., Vienna, and several others have been dubbed with the same distinction, but the City of Light usually manages to top the list of cities remembered by world travelers for its beauty. And in painting, we have only to look at the work of the Impressionists with their broad, expansive views of the city's boulevards of the 1870s and 80s to confirm our theory. The men and women uh, painting these pictures were in love with their city, for it was a new city, much more beautiful than that which they had grown up in. It was a city owing its beauty to two men, Louis Napoleon, Napoleon III, and Baron Haussmann, whom he named the Prefect of the Seine. Between the years 1853 and 1870, the good Baron tore down the old Paris and built a new one. The Impressionists showcased it. Paris, the first half of the 19th century, was a disaster. In 1800, the city was a modest little medieval cesspool of around 500,000. But by the 1850, the city had grown into a monstrous dung heap of over a million. Even the government had long since fled the city in favor of Versailles. Under Haussmann's dictatorial direction, the narrow thousand-year-old streets were replaced by elegant avenues 130 feet wide. Entire neighborhoods disappeared. 20,000 houses were torn down and replaced by 40,000 modern buildings, many still standing today. The Seine River was tamed. Many of the old medieval structures had been built right down to the river's edge. Hausmann ripped them out and built stone embankments and a modern storm sewer system five times larger than before. Graceful bridges replaced rickety wooden structures. Trees were reintroduced to the city. And everywhere, new, bright, Beaux-Arts architecture. Architecture and more architecture. All of it united in a single, somewhat Baroque style and giving the city for the first time in history anywhere. A single, unified look and feel. This was the invention of urban and renewal on a grand scale. And while most people agreed that the end result was far superior to what had what was before, Haussmann was a man of many enemies. Chief among them was the writer Victor Hugo. The costs were astronomical. Little amenities we take for granted today, such as public restrooms and those big round French columns for posters, were deemed scandalous, scandalous wastes of taxpayer money. <laughs> Poverty and crime were sent packing to the growing untamed suburbs, while the government and gentility retook the city, as demonstrated by the hugely successful Universal Exposition of 1855. The transition was painful, and the process sometimes not pretty. But as the would-be Impressionists were coming of age, so too was the city they loved. Maybe it was a coincidence, and maybe not, but they both bloomed at once, art not imitating the new way of life, but proclaiming it.